I'm Caleb. I'm Jeanette. And this is Surely Mental. This episode will be dedicated to discussing academic burnout, what it is, how it happens, and why, and ways to prevent it. What tea are you drinking, Caleb? I am drinking Mint Medley by Bigelow. And I'm drinking Vanilla Chai by Bigelow. So, what is burnout? Uh, Burnout is basically, it can be, it's a negative effect that can be either physical, mental, or emotional, or all of the above. And it often correlates to extensive studying without breaks, without time for yourself or time for sleep and all that. Uh, And it can result in frustration, exhaustion, physically and mentally, lack of motivation, and lack of motivation, sorry. Um, And Caleb, out of this list of symptoms, which ones do you experience the most? Um, Exhaustion, regardless the amount of sleep. Lack of motivation, irritability, missing deadlines, <laughs> lack of confidence. Um, I don't have paid attention too much. Um, definitely an increase in bad habits, especially with nail picking slash biting, loss of concentration, and boredness. Oh, there's more. Thank yeah, you I do really also feel anxiety, well. depression, and breaking down over small things. So, Thank you for reading the list. Those are my symptoms. <laughs> and those are also all of the symptoms. Well, not all of the symptoms. Those most are like main symptoms. Common symptoms for burnt outness. Um, so for me, I definitely experience exhaustion regardless of the amount of sleep. Like I've tried, I used to sleep like six hours a night, I would feel tired. So then I started sleeping like 11 to 12 hours a night. I felt really tired. Then I slept like 10 hours a night, which is what's recommended. And I still felt tired. Then I slept like eight hours, still felt tired. Like no matter what I sleep, I still end up waking up and being exhausted throughout the day. Um, uh, Lack of motivation. I procrastinate all the time. Not because like, it's not because I don't want to do it. It's just because I don't feel the motivation to do it. Like I don't feel like it's worth doing almost. Like, even though I know it's really important, which makes me miss the deadlines. A uh, lack of confidence, I don't really feel. Like, well, lack of confidence in my abilities, definitely. Yeah, in yourself. Yeah, like, I feel like, like I don't have confidence anyway. But, um. <laughs> you should have confidence, though, at least sometimes. Sometimes I do, but, like, I don't, like, readily have confidence all the time. Like, it's nothing that I've been missing because of uh, burn, burnout. Um, irritability. I feel that all the time. All the time at school. Like, sometimes I, I, I always feel so bad because my friend will be, like, talking to me. And I'm like, I'm so irritated right now, but I don't know why. It's like, I'm still going to laugh at your jokes. I'm still going to, like, do all this. Because, like, I know that, like, I have no reason to be irritated. But I just feel it for no reason. And then I don't feel any pain or tension in my body. Except headaches, but we already discussed this. This is not related to the burnout. Um, Increase in bad habits. I also bite my nails um, and my cuticles. Um, And that's really one. Overeating is a bad habit that I'm trying to get over. I've been doing that a lot more recently. Like, I literally had, like, three lunches today already. Um, Yum. <laughs> but it, well, one of them was cake. That's the best kind of lunch, though. I mean, not to be like a... I know we just talked about eating healthy and eating right in the last episode, but cake for lunch is amazing. But okay. what's even better is cake for breakfast. Carry on. Yeah, waking <laughs> um, up and yum. A uh, loss of concentration, I feel all the time. I can never focus on, like, this over this winter break, I've had to read The Scarlet Letter uh, by Nathaniel, Hoth- uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne. And I, like, I'm interested in it. I want to read it. But I just can't focus for over, like, 30 minutes at a time. Which by itself is impressive compared to how much loss of concentration other people feel. Um... Uh, boredness. 
It depends. Or it just depends on what the subject is. Like, I used to love English. I used to love it so much. Now I just get so bored by it. And I just have no motivation in it. Because I just feel like I'm not... Like, I end up getting good grades. It's just, like, I feel like I'm not doing good in it for some reason. I feel like that has more to do with depression. <laughs> what was that shift in facial expression? <laughs> Depression and anxiety is the next bullet point on your list. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting there's another page. Uh, yeah, anxiety and depression, definitely. It, my anxiety and depression came before burnout for me. I uh, think it was like, the cause of burnout for me. Yeah, definitely. Like, I feel like the symptoms of depression ended up correlating to symptoms of burnout. Like, the loss of motivation, I would feel that with life, and then I would feel that with um I feel like here's the difference, though. At least in my opinion, I don't, you know, have a psychology degree. I've done no research on this. But I feel like burnt outness is when you, is like loss of concentration, anxiety, all, whatever, all these symptoms, but on a specific issue, specific thing, specific event that's happening. Like, if it's mm-hmm. school, it's academic burnout. It could be work burnout. Maybe you're burnt out from doing laundry, all that fun stuff. But it's directed at a specific thing. I feel like overall anxiety and depression is just kind of a loss of concentration in life or, mm-hmm. like, an anxiety of life in a way, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, what I was saying is, like, uh, first I had, like, a loss of, um, like enthusiasm and concentration and all in life and then it kind of like focused itself into school and like then I was like then like basically my entire life became school because I was just so interested in it and I wanted to do it so well but then I ended up working myself too extensively and didn't take breaks any of that I basically just worked 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 in school um and then everything just became about that and then burnout happened. And uh, one thing that is interesting to note and very important for spreading awareness of burnout is that it is a lot more common in kids who learn or think differently, such as people with dyslexia. Um, what other learning disabilities are there? There's many. Anything can affect your learning. If you uh, have, like... OCD, ADD, ADHD, bipolar can affect it. Just general depression can affect it. But if you're talking more like mentally incapable of learning at the same rate as I guess what you could call normal people, even though that's a terrible phrase, but normal people, I mean, Down syndrome, other things like that. Just anyone anyone who's not considered normal by society. Yeah, like uh, one of the sources I was reading uh, s- singled out dyslexia and talked about how um, people with dyslexia often end up having to do a lot more work than people without it. Because you have to, you have to, one thing to point out that I never really considered before to be a big stressor and like exercise like not exercise but like it takes a lot of effort is constant self-advocating um because lots of time teachers will forget that you need um uh what's it called extra help not extra help it's like wait let me find the source um Accommodations. Uh, lots of teachers will forget that you need accommodations, and then you have to self advocate about like, uh, I am supposed to be able to get this. Like, I know I have two friends with dyslexia, and they get extra time on tests, which lots of teachers forget about. Um, or they need uh, to have the uh, test read to them instead of just reading it themselves which teachers, again, forget about, and then they have to self-advocate throughout the day. 
And that can be a big, like, it can be mentally exhausting. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine doing that. Don't you have dyslexia? No. Oh, I thought you did. (laughs) What is beeping? My diffuser turned off because I had it on the one hour timer. Uh, uh, no, I do not have dyslexia. I thought you did. I don't know why. Um, you're colorblind. Is that what you're looking for? You are colorblind. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I thought of dyslexia. I did not. Um, yeah, I thought you were going to talk about that because I was like, Caleb, I think you have just dys- like, I thought you had dyslexia. Um, no, I, I, my cousin has dyslexia. I don't know much about it. But Oh, no, it was that we were it was that we were saying like I think you have dyslexia because like you were always having trouble spelling stuff. So. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just a bad speller. <laughs> yeah. I don't have dyslexia. No. No. I mean, I'm pretty sure I don't. I I read fine. I just can't spell mm-hmm. the words. My friend with dyslexia, she has like this like she reads, she says she at least she says that this is what it is. But she says she reads better holding the book upside down. Hmm. Interesting. Which I never thought of that. Like, I was just, we were in history class reading Animal Farm. And um, I just look over at her. And I'm like, I'm just going to call her Jessica. I'm like, Jessica, your book's upside down. And she's like, yeah, I know. This, I read better this way. To each their own. If it works, it works. Yeah, it's like, I never, like, I personally can't do that. Like, I read so much slower because my brain takes more time processing it. But, like, it works for people. Yeah. Uh, How can we prevent burnout, Caleb? Take breaks. You should always take breaks. I mean, in today's society, I'm going off on a societal rant. But everything is so fast-paced, and I think it has a lot to do with technology. But it's just, like, everything is go, 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 go. And when you're going and going and going, there's not really time to slow down and think about what you're doing or even enjoy the things you're doing. I mean, how many hobbies do we do just because we do them? And we don't actually enjoy them anymore. They've gone past the point of enjoyment because it's just another thing to check off of our box. So taking breaks is a very good way to stop the burnout because you're taking a pause you're taking a break from whatever activity it is that you're just going and going and going and that Uh, moves us along to spending time on things you enjoy which are your hobbies you kind of of touched on how like a lot of people will like keep going with hobbies that they don't enjoy anymore just for the like idea of (laughs) doing it because they feel like they have to um, but switch, you can switch as like some people don't have control over it, but what you do have control over, you can switch those into things that you do enjoy. Like that's one of my new year's resolutions that we said last episode, spend more time on things you actually enjoy. And I've been doing that recently and it helps so much with the motivation because it's like, now it's like, instead of, well, I just have to get this done and then what now? Now it's like, I get this done, and then I can go and do this that I actually enjoy doing. Um, So it's like, it's less of a, there's more of a reward after the work, which motivates you. Yes. That's why, like, a lot of hobbies are hands-on things, because you get the reward at the end. Mm -hmm. And um, also... We also touched on this a little bit uh, last episode, but exercise is a great way to, uh, like, not extensive exercise, but just exercise in itself is a great way to kind of let go of stress, and um, it can be something that you can get motivated over and just, like, don't get addicted to it. That's not good. But, yeah. um just something to like, like for me, walking, I can't run, but walking. Um, 
really helps me like let go of stress in my life and uh, kind of like be alone with my thoughts for a little bit. I'm taking a picture for the snap for um, Instagram. <laughs> I saw you pointing the camera at the screen. That was like, hi. Um, Wave to the people. <laughs> All right, continue on with what you were saying. I'm sorry. Nice. And then just like, I when I am walking, I end up doing it in a gym a lot because I have a gym membership and I don't want to waste it. But I'm honestly thinking of maybe getting rid of that gym membership because I miss, well, I'm, I'm going to do it for the winter at least, but I miss going outside for my walks because it's so like relaxing to just like be outside fresh air. Um, just like being with nature is such a relaxing thing and it's like we don't get to do this enough in our lives Mm -hmm. and then the next thing i don't really can't really think of a transition for this but don't procrastinate um which can be really hard with burnout because again you have no motivation to do anything you don't um like you end up missing deadlines you have no motivation you have uh bad habits exhaustion and boredness, which all feed into procrastination, unfortunately. But and then when you're procrastinating, that's just another thing of go, 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 because you have to get it all done. So it's yeah, one assignment it's, after another one after another one. It's a terrible cycle. It's like doing the work causes you to have burnout, which causes you to have procrastination, which leads to um, more stress, which leads you burnt out yes yes (laughs) and yeah but actually getting stuff done again it gives a sense of achievement um like if you're just procrastinating the entire time then you get done at like the last second you don't really feel that much achievement it's just like oh well now now what like if you get that done on time and you actually have time afterwards now you can do things that you enjoy it's like wow that was worth it Because now you don't have to spend your, now, like, if you, you might be, you might think, like, oh, well, I can just do things I want to do beforehand and then procrastinate and do it after. But then when you're doing the things you enjoy, all of the time in your head, you're like, okay, I have to get this done later. I have to get this done later. I have to get this done later. Like, if you get it done first and then go on and do the things you enjoy, then you're stress-free. Or maybe not stress-free. You have less stress in your life. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of leads into health, healthy habits, which what are some healthy habits that you have been trying to work on, Caleb? I have been trying to get into journaling and meditation in the morning. Um, I haven't been very successful, but that is one a healthy habit I'm trying to get into. And then I'm also trying to just not necessarily work out, but move more. Like I don't really move a lot unless I'm working. I'm just kind of, in my room all day so just you know standing up doing a few jumping jacks walking around the house whatever it may be just something to like not be a couch potato what are some of your healthy habits um i used to do this a lot and i'm trying to do it more is again what you said journaling um i've been doing it for the last couple of days i got an app on my phone because like i feel like time blo- i don't know how this works for you but time blocking really helps me like having dedicated mm-hmm. times for each thing that you're going to do. So I downloaded an app. It's called like routinely or something like that. Um, but basically I have a morning routine and a nighttime routine. Um, and like it, it basically breaks down to like the, the smallest steps every morning and every night. And for one of them, I put journaling. So it's like, I have to do it every night I have to dedicate t- uh, 10 minutes of journaling every single night. And then like helps me like grow a little tree on my app. Um, <laughs> which is so stupid, but it brings motivation to do it. Like, it's like, oh, if you forget to do this and you're like done. Yeah. And then other healthy habits do I have? Definitely spending time on things you enjoy. I've been trying to do more, which that's, it's not really, I feel like it's Good not better. really a by a lot of people, but it really is. Yeah. Because it's, it's during winter though, it's always tough to go outside because the weather sucks and it's cold but mm-hmm. I just gotta get up and do it. Yeah, I, uh, my neighbor goes on 
five mile walk, four to five mile walks every single day. Goodness gracious. Like, Couldn't be me. My school is a 15 minute drive away. And she, she, I was just talking with her and she's like, oh yeah, so every day I walk up to your school. I'm like, what? <laughs> like you walk to our school. And I'm like that. I was like doing the math in my head and I was like, that is a long time for a walk. And she does it in the dead of winter. Good for her. Very good for her. She wanted me to go on a walk with her once. She wanted me to go with her. And I was like, I'd love to. Maybe in the summer. (laughs) I I was on a 10-mile kick for a long time. And it it was weird. So there's this lake by my house. And it's, you know, a ways away. And I was just like, I'm going to walk to it. And I think I walked, it's 10 miles, both there. And so it's five miles away because you have to get there and then you have to come back. But I I did it for about three days. And and then I stopped because I was in pain. But the people that can do that are really an inspiration. Yeah, it's like good for them. One thing is I'd love to be able to do that, but I just don't have the time in my day. Yeah, it's like like all morning just for that. I can't imagine walking all the way to a school and back. Because like I average, uh, well, it was about the same distance as you walking to the lake. It was five miles. Okay. Um, but uh, I'd love I'd love to just be able to dedicate like a good couple hours because it takes me on average about twenty minutes to walk a mile. So that's about. Uh, that's about, boy, <laughs> I'm like failing to do math in my head. You can do this, man. Oh my god, that's like one and two thirds hours <laughs> to walk five miles, right? <laughs> Is that right? I don't know. I'm going to say it took me about two hours to walk okay, yeah. 10 miles. Oh, 10 miles. Well, I would say you're pretty close. Well, I was saying five miles. Yeah, but 20, 20, that's three miles every hour. So five, I don't know. This is, why are we doing math? It's five sixteen. Yeah, I was right. It's one and, two, one and two thirds of an hour. Right. Um, Either way, the point being, yeah. it takes a long time to walk places. Yeah, and, but it's worth it. You just have to be able to chalk out that time is that a term chalking out time in your day it is now okay (laughs) you just have to be able to like cut out time in your day to uh do these activities that you want to do um and sometimes that can be really hard it can be especially because it's so much easier to sit down on inside in the warm and scroll through tiktok or whatever it is Mm -hmm. and you just so much easier than running or walking 10 miles yeah like and it can be really especially hard if you either have school or a scheduled job like some Mm -hmm. people have the privilege of being able to work from home and making their own schedule but a lot of people don't and they you have to like some people work nine to five jobs or like even longer than that and it's like it can be hard to chalk out two hours. I said that again. Um, to cut out two hours of your day to dedicate to this when there's also lots of people after their nine to five job come home and they have families to take care of. They have second jobs to go to. And like, it can be really hard if not impossible, but if you can do it, I definitely recommend it. And it doesn't have to be 10 miles. Go for half a mile. Go for mm-hmm. one mile. Do what you can do. Small steps. Yeah. And I was about to say something, but I forgot it. All right. Um, anyway, I don't know what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> oh, what else? <laughs> um... This is your episode. I'm not. What are, what are some unhealthy educational habits that you're trying to get rid of? Unhealthy educational. Obsessive note taking. Not everything in the lesson needs to be written down again. 
Only the important stuff. I take, I, I, I'm very weird with my notes. It's like, I'll never take notes unless it's history. In history class, like, I will, I have, like, one and a half notebooks worth of notes from this year alone. Wow. <laughs> um, but, like, it's not something that I thought of as, like, a chore. It was just, like, yeah. it was, like, fun. It, like, it, it helped me remember stuff better. But, like, I definitely understand what you're saying with, like, taking notes on things that don't need to be no- taken taken note of. Like, yeah. the difference with mine was that, like, my teacher, it's, like, literally everything he says is important, basically. So it's, like, you kind of have to write down everything. But, like, I know a lot of people who I'll be in, like, class with, and they'll, like, they'll, like, ask them for their notes quickly because, like, I missed a day or something. Um, and then I'll look at their notes, and I'm, like, was this necessary to be written down? Was this half of a page really necessary? Or was that just like you writing something down just to write it down? It's like a yeah, lot of people. And don't get a, like, yeah, if you are the person that does nice, pretty, aesthetic notes, great. Good for you. But your notes are not required to be pretty, they can look awful. And that is something that I had to get over is the fact that I, I don't need to rewrite all of my notes. That and it takes up two hours to make them look pretty. Like if if you want to, great, good for you. But I was just obsessing over it, and it was not healthy. I wanted to do that for a while. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get a second notebook and rewrite all my notes every single night. I never ended up doing it because I just didn't have time for it. But I'm glad I didn't because it is unhealthy, and it's not something that's necessary. Sometimes, if your handwriting is absolutely horrendous, as mine is, um then it might be helpful for you to rewrite your notes, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be like legible so that you can actually look back on them and yeah, understand. You don't, you don't need all the fancy highlighters and all the little doodles. Just yeah. a pencil and a piece of paper and say a prayer and good luck. Yes. Uh, my unhealthy habits. Um, definitely perfectionism. Mm-hmm. I like and like overachievement like I will as you know overachieve on everything yeah um, it's a good reminder that uh, C's get degrees too yes which I, mean, I but yeah. also one thing that I've been struggling with recently because like I was the kid who would if I got an A minus I would cry um okay but then I was kind of like in the mind, then I was like, then February happened. And I was like, okay, I need to, this is like a big cause of my depression is school. I need to like be okay with getting bad grades. But then I got too comfortable with it where I was like, I don't care anymore. I was like, I'll get a C and I don't care. Yeah. It's like, there's a good balance and it's different for everyone. Mm-hmm. And the balance is hard. The balance is really hard to get to. And it takes it's, so time. Easy, it's so easy to just like be like, okay, I don't care. If I get a C minus, I have passed. It's okay. But then it's also easy to end up forcing yourself to get into that cycle of you need to get perfect perfect grades on every single thing that you do when that's not necessary. Like if you get a C that's not bad, but you shouldn't strive for a C. You should strive for a B or an A but be okay if it doesn't turn out that way. But still put your effort into it. Well, societal rant, but capitalism and all the... I, there's, I mean, the reason there's so much pressure on it is because it's like, you need to have good grades so you can graduate high school, so colleges will want you. And then even then there, you need to get good grades. And then you get your degree and you got to be good because you need an employer and you got to work up all the ranks. So mm-hmm. everything is just about what's happening next and nobody's really ever focusing on the present. That's very true. Um, yeah, I feel like one of the biggest things in high school is like, like they, what they keep ramming into you is um, get good grades so colleges will accept you. Yep. And it's like, well, yes, I mean, like, an employer 
if you got into Harvard or an Ivy League, any Ivy League school, great. If they look at that and they they might think of it as a bonus, but they're not going to look at you and be like, well, with some very big jobs, maybe, but like, say you're applying to just like a normal job, uh, they're not no, going to be like, oh, I hate to say it. Job. But a degree from your local community college has just as much worth as a degree from Yale or Harvard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of like what I was getting into. I was like, they're not going, like, if someone, if they look at the resume and they're like, oh, this guy got into Harvard, that's really cool. But they're not going to look at yours and be like, oh, this person didn't get into an Ivy League school. I'm not going to accept them. Yeah. It's like they're I mean, just... they may look at it and be like, well, this person went to Harvard, so I'm going to pick them over you. But mm -hmm. so what? Do you really want that employer anyway? Mm -hmm. And it's one of the big things that was kind of taught to me about, like, the AP test is, like, the score doesn't matter unless you do good. If you do bad, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't affect you that much at all. Yeah. Um, if you do good, then it just is, like, a bonus, but you're not going to go down by doing bad. Not that, And that's not to say that uh, community college is bad. As you're saying, like, it's not as prestigious i guess i was getting into like an ivy league school but like that doesn't matter it's an education and it's they're teaching you very much similar things yeah <laughs> that's what I, yeah i mean yeah you're right thanks for tuning in surely mental is a weekly podcast released on mondays at 3 p.m don't forget to follow us at at Shirley Mental Podcast on all socials. This is Caleb. And Jeanette. You can find us personally on all socials at, at Cable underscore 2431. And at Jeanette Ireland. This was Shirley Mental. See you next time.